There is an induced EMF, of course. We should calculate that induced EMF in a coil. But this induced EMF is because of the change in electric current. Because of the change in electric current. This change in electric current induces EMF. That I am going to write an equation. Not in terms of change in magnetic flux, in terms of change in electric current. Because self induction, we are changing electric current. How? Oh, magnetic flux is changing, correct? But I will write an equation which includes delta i instead of delta phi. So, self induced EMF, I am going to say that. How can we calculate it? First thing, we know that these three quantities are directly proportional. What are they? i, b, and phi. I is electric current. If electric current increases in a coil, absolutely magnetic field increases. Remember, I am proportional. If magnetic field is increasing, magnetic flux also increases. Yeah, these three are always proportional. Or all together decreases. If I make a change in electric current, can I say can you say that there's a change in magnetic field? Yes. If there's a change in magnetic field, can you say that there's a change in magnetic flux? Yes. Yeah, these three are also proportional. Change in electric current, change in magnetic field, change in magnetic flux. These three are also proportional. So I'm not going to deal with the change in magnetic flux. I will write a relation between change in electric current and change in magnetic flux. Yeah, if you make a change in electric current in a coil, absolutely magnetic flux will change proportionally. Okay? If I divide them by delta T, why am I doing that? Because I want to get the rate of change. How, what is the relation between the rate of change of electric current? What is the relation between the rate of change in the magnetic flux? They are related as well. Delta I over delta T, Rate of change in electric current, delta phi over delta t, rate of change in magnetic flux, they are also directly proportional. Yeah, and if you make a change in electric current, which means you will make a change in magnetic flux. If rate of change in electric current is greater, rate of change in magnetic flux is also greater. They are directly proportional. Then I will multiply both sides by negative n. If I multiply both sides by negative n, I got an equation which would I know. What is this equation? For a no? For a there's no magnetic induction. Negative n delta phi over delta t. What does this calculate? Indicium. Negative n delta phi over delta t calculates indicium. And instead of this, I am going to write E, which is indicium in the coil. Indicium in the coil is proportional to three quantities. Negative n delta phi over delta t. Okay? This is a proportionality. Every proportionality can be converted to any quality by inserting a constant. If we insert a constant. So by inserting a constant to proportionality, we are going to write an equality. E is equal to n times a constant. I inserted the constant. Times delta i over delta t. This n times constant is called coefficient of self-induction of the coil. N times constant is called coefficient of self-induction of the solvent and represented by capital M. Capital M. Coefficient of self-induction of the solvent. It's a number. It's a number. Belongs to a coil, which is going to be like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1, 1 1.5. It will be given a question to you. And its symbol is capital L. Its unit is handwritten. Its unit is handwritten. But Henry is equal to 1. By using this equation, I can get it. Tell me, what is unit of induced EMF? Volt. Equals. Uh, unit of coefficient of self induction and Henry. Right instead of L Henry. Henry. Multiplied by. What is unit of electric current? Ampere. 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 Divided by. What is your delta T? Second. So now I can get equivalent of Henry. Just flip ampere per second and take other side. Flip it. It will be second divided by volt multiplied by second divided by ampere is equivalent of Henry. This is Mr. Exam questions. Last year's Mr. Exam question. Which of the following is equivalent to Henry? Which of the following is equal to Henry? Volt times second divided by ampere. How did I get it? By using this equation. This equation which we are going to use for calculating the CMF right now. 
negative L delta I over delta T. Did I convert Faraday's law to this one? Yes. If Faraday's law, negative N delta alpha I over delta T, it was, but this is negative L delta I over delta T. So now, by using the change in electric current, I can calculate this here. Now I'm going to do an exercise about this. You will see that it's not that hard. It's not that hard. This is one of the popular ministry exam question. Electric current grows. What does grow mean? Increase. Electric current increases. In a circuit from 0 to 10. From 0 to 10. Yani initial electric current is 0. Final electric current is 10. That's all. It's an increase, eh? Every increase change must be positive. What is delta I then? Tell me. Delta I. Uh, 10. 10 minus 0. Yeah, positive 10. Positive 10 ampere. Final value is 10. Initial value is 0. 10 minus 0, which is 10. Positive 10. Increases during 0.1 second. What is it? 0.1. Time interval, huh? Delta T. Delta T is 0.1 second. If the coefficient of self-induction L of the circuit is 0.02, as you see, they give this coefficient to you, 0.02 Henry, which is L. L is 0.02 Henry. Calculate induced EMF within the coefficient circuit. Calculate induced EMF. E is the question. So I know that e is equal to negative L. Delta I over delta T. In this title, be careful about not forgetting this negative. This is the only thing you should forget because the others are very easy. Never forget negative. It's coming from the last one again. All right, E is equal to negative. How much is L? 0.02. 0.02. Multiplied by how much is electric current change? 10. How much is delta T? 0.1. Use your calculator. This other is going to be negative 2 volts. So in this EMF, in this coil, because of the change in electric current is negative, two volt. Choices they will give both positive two and negative two. Choices will be like this. A is positive two volt, B is negative two volt, C is positive four volt, B is negative four volt, and so on. And which one is the correct answer? B is the correct answer. Now we are going to learn how to calculate coefficient of self-induction of a solenoid. And we know that coefficient of self-induction of a solenoid depends on specifications of the coil, the properties of the coil. Now we are going to get at which property coefficient of self-induction depends on. Okay, assume that we have a solenoid with a number of turns and, and turns. And its length is L, cross section area is A. For this solenoid, if you make a change in electric current, we know that there will be a change in magnetic flux. And inducium F can be, uh, can be calculated. In this F equation, we have two inducium F equations. One of them is in terms of change in magnetic flux, which is known as Faraday's law, negative delta phi over delta T multiplied by N. Second one is in terms of change in electric current. Negative L delta I over delta T. These two equations are equivalent because both are calculating the same quantity. What do they calculate? In this So, can I make them equal? Yes, I can. Because both are calculating E. So if, you, if I make them equal, these delta T's will simplify. These negative signs will simplify. From this equation, n times delta phi is left. From this equation, l times delta i is left. This tells you if there's a change in magnetic electric current, there will be a change in magnetic flux as well. But if you keep the electric current constant, the magnetic flux is also constant. And then you are going to remove this to delta sign. There is going to be an equation. This equation is one of the important equations. One of the important equations, I put it in a uh, different color, yellow. This equation relates electric current and magnetic flux. This equation relates electric current and magnetic flux of a solenoid. Also, last year, 
The question is asked about the unity of Henry. You know, these equations are also helping us to write equivalent unit. Like this? Now, tell me what is, and it's just a number, huh? and has no units. But what is unit of magnetic flux? Weber. Weber. Let's try it in here. Unit of magnetic flux is Weber. Weber is equal to, what is unit of coefficient of self-induction? Henry. 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 Let's write it. Henry. Multiplied by, what is unit of electric current? Ampere. Yes. Then can you say that one Weber is equal to one hundred times ampere? Yes. Yes, we can see. One Weber is equal to one hundred times ampere. But let's see take this the ask reverse. One hundred is equal to Weber. Weber divided by ampere. So if you divide both sides by ampere, so Henry is equal to 1 Weber divided by ampere, and is equal to 1 Weber. So this was 2021 in this exam question. 1, 1 Henry is equal to 1 Weber divided by ampere. Also, you can use this equation, this equation for calculating magnetic flux. If electric current is given, L is given, and is given. If these three are given, you can calculate magnetic flux to a summary. Okay, now we will advance until here, this important this equation, but we will go continue. How can we calculate magnetic flux? A times B. Because magnetic flux for a solenoid is maximum, because magnetic field lines are passing through parallel, and cross section is always perpendicular to magnetic field. So, magnetic flux for a solenoid is maximum. Yeah, A times B or B times A. Instead of phi, I will write B times A. Uh, you know, chapter 5, section 2. Magnetic field of a solenoid. Equation. What is the equation for magnetic field of a solenoid? Mu i n divided by L. Instead of B, write mu i n divided by L. Okay? I wrote it in here. Mu i n divided by L. So, right side has electric current. Left side also has electric current. They will simplify, correct? So, these i's will simplify. What is left? Mu and mu is left. N times n? N squared. N squared. Multiplied by area divided by mm -hmm. L. This is the equation for calculating coefficient of self induction of a solenoid. Coefficient of self induction of the solenoid depends on. Now let's continue. Mu. What is mu? Magnetic permeability of the medium. Through inside this tube, what is the magnetic permeability in here? Which medium you are using? Depends on. Number of turns, how many turns are there? Depends on cross section area. This area is how much? Depends on length. What is the length of the solenoid? Four factors determine the coefficient of self induction of the solenoid. So remember, we said that coefficient of self induction related to specification of the solenoid. There will be four factors medium. So, which determines mu? Second one, number of turns. Third one, cross section area. Fourth one, length. These four factors determine the coefficient of self induction of a solenoid. The co coefficient of the self induction of the solenoid is proportional to mu, magnetic permeability. Proportional to square of number of turns. Proportional to area, cross section area of the solenoid, and inversely proportional to length. length of the solenoid. Now, about this, there's a question. This is the question, also, Mr. Exam question. Which one leads a higher increase in coefficient of self induction of a solenoid? A, doubling the number of its turns. B, doubling its cross-section area. Which one? It's a higher increase. We know that L is proportional to square of number of turns. If number of turns doubled to n, which is square to n, square of 20 is what? 4. 4 n squared. As you see, it increases by 4. 
But for area, it's not like this. L is proportional to area. If area doubles, L also doubles. I make a proportion. Doubling the number of turns leads to higher increase in the coefficient of self-induction of the solenoid. Why? Because it is proportional to square of the number of turns. Coefficient of self-induction is proportional to mu. Proportional to area and proportional to square of the number of turns and inversely proportional to the length of the solenoid. If these four quantities are given, mu and a l, you can calculate coefficient of self-induction. An air solenoid of 10 centimeter, length is 10 centimeter, but we don't use centimeter in calculation, correct? We have to convert centimeter to meter. How? 10 centimeter, how many meters? 1.1. Cross section area is 25 centimeter squared. This is area. But centimeter squared is not as unit again. We have to convert centimeter squared to meter squared by multiplying 10 to the power of negative 4. So remember, centimeter, yeah, but use the exponential number, it's much better. One centimeter is equal to 10 to the power of negative two meter. But if it is square, you should square both sides. Square of one is one. Square of centimeter, centimeter square. Is equal to square of 10 to the power of negative two? 10 to the power of negative four. Square of meter, meter square. So if you want to convert, Centimeter squared to meter squared, you should multiply by 10 to the power of negative 4. So, area is going to be, it is given 25 centimeter squared, it's 25 times 10 to the power of negative 4 meter squared. Number of turns? N. How much? How many number of turns are there? 400 turns. Is traversed by a current? Current is 4 amperes. So this is I. I is 4 ampere. Calculate magnetic flux which crosses the solenoid. Calculate magnetic flux. Why is the question? Which crosses the solenoid? We know that when uh, electric current is given to a solenoid, magnetic field lines are almost parallel inside. An angle between the normal of the surface and the magnetic field lines are almost zero. Cosine zero is one. Yeah, the maximum magnetic flux. So area of the cross section area is almost perpendicular to magnetic field lines, and maximum magnetic flux is calculated. What is what's the equation for magnetic flux? Maximum magnetic flux. A times B. So I will now solve part A. Magnetic flux equation is area times magnetic field strength. Area is given, but magnetic field strength is not given. We should calculate it. We, we know that from chapter 5, section 2. Okay, let's write it. So, phi is equal to area times, so B is equal to mu times I times N divided by M. So, now all are given. You are going to insert all the given and it will calculate. So, how much is the magnetic flux? Let's get it. Area is 25 times 10 to the power of negative 4. We know that it's 4 pi times 4 air solenoid is 10, 10 to the power of negative 7. I is given as 4 ampere, and is given as 400. Correct? Yes. Divided by how much is the length? 4.1. 4.1. Only you need to use your calculator, even you don't need any bracket in here. When you multiply them all and divide by 0.1, five, five, the result 5 times 10 to the power of 4. So 5 is going to be, magnetic plus is going to be 5 times. 10 to the power of 85 Weber. This is magnetic flux. Tabi, air solenoid, it will be you, don't worry about this, it will be written in here. I will continue with part two, but now for part A and for this I calculated the magnetic flux, how much? Five times 10 to the power of negative five Weber. Now, part B. Be careful about part B. If the current is reversed during 0.1 seconds, delta T. Delta T is 0.1 second. Current is reversed. 
Calculate induced EMF. E is the question. Now, what does current reverse mean? And like magnetic electric current just changes direction. If electric current direction changes in a solenoidity, magnetic field direction also changes. In the first one, magnetic field is from left to right. But now, when electric current is reversed, it comes from right to left. Now, tell me. In here, angle between the magnetic field lines and normal is zero. Cosine zero is one. But in the second one, when current is reversed, Angle between the magnetic field lines and normal of the surface is how much? What is this angle? 180. Cosine 180 is how much? Negative. Negative 1. What does it mean? Magnetic flux changes from positive to negative, negative when electric current is reversed. So initial magnetic flux was 5 times 10 to the power negative 5. So when electric current is reversed, magnetic field is reversed, magnetic flux changes from positive to Negative. Final magnetic flux is going to be in this case negative 5 times 10 to the power of negative 5 beta. I know what initial magnetic flux is. I know what magnet, final magnetic flux is. Can I use Faraday's law? Yes. yes, I can. I will use the Faraday's law now. B. Faraday's law says that E is equal to negative m delta phi over delta. T. And I know that negative n delta phi means final magnetic flux minus initial magnetic flux divided by delta T. Now let's insert the numbers. How much is that? 400. Let's insert in 400. And how much final magnetic flux? Negative 5. Don't forget this negative. Negative 5 times 10 to the power of negative 5 minus how much is the initial magnetic flux? 5 times 10 to the power of negative 5 close the bracket, divided by how much is delta t? 4.1 only don't forget to use this bracket when you use your calculator you will get a result e is equal to positive 0.4 volt this problem can also be calculated in an alternative way. Uh, first, uh, you calculate the coefficient of self-induction, L, by the equation L is equal to mu n squared A divided by L. So, mu is 4 pi times 10 to the power of negative 7. N is given in the problem as 400 and square it. Multiplied by area of the coil solenoid is 25 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Divided by L which is equal to 0.1. So use your calculator. 4 pi 4 times 3.14 times 10 to the power of negative 7 times 400 squared times 25 times 10 to the power of negative 4 divided by 0.1 is 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So coefficient of self-induction of this solenoid is 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 uh, Henry. So Part A asks you to calculate the magnetic flux. We can use the equation n times phi is equal to L times I for calculating magnetic flux. Uh, divide both sides by n. Simplify n. You can get magnetic flux as L times I divided by n. L is we just calculated L, 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Electric current in the question is given as 4. Divided by N is given as 400. So when you use your calculator, you will get the result 5 times 10 to the power of negative 5 Weber. This is part A. Part B, 
if the current is reversed during 0.1 second, so calculate in this CMF is the question. Uh, current is reversed means if initial current is taken as 4 ampere, if the current is reversed, final electric current becomes negative 4 ampere. In this case, delta I is going to be I final minus I initial. So delta I is I final is negative 4, I initial is 4, negative 4, negative 4, it becomes negative 8 ampere. So then we can use Henry's law for calculating the CMF e is equal to negative L delta I over delta T. So negative L is, we just calculated in here, 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Multiplied by delta I is negative 8. Divided by delta T is 0.1. So if you continue calculation, you will again get the same answer, which is positive 0.4 volt. So there are two methods. One of them is using the Faraday's law. Second one is using the Henry's law. You can solve this, two, this problem by two ways.